and bring on Owen Farrell. Boys are saying it's the first time he started for England under Eddie Jones, but he really has earned the fly half shirt. George Ford, a classy operator, but this season Ford has struggled. Farrell has really come into his own, and with the Saracens, who have won the English Premiership and the European Cup, there is a lot of confidence. There's another Saracen, Billy Vinopola, and England know they haven't won in Brisbane, but they know that never is a word that always comes to an end at some stage. Teams just swapping ends and making those final mental preparations. The series about to get underway in one of the great stadiums. The Lions liked it here in 2013. Can England get that 1-0 edge? And in Anthony Watson, they have a man who is scoring and scoring in an international jersey. Roman Poitz is referee. The Frenchman supported by Craig Joubert and Glenn Jackson with Ben Skeen as the television match official. The countdown to kickoff. Test match number one for the Cook Cup. England against Australia in sport right up there. Bernard Foley gets the series on the way. Brown. Yikes. Cooper took a bang immediately, an amazing chase, putting big pressure. England get the penalty, but Michael Hooper, he does that so well for Australia, but he definitely is looking uncomfortable on the far touchline. Young man who led the side when just 22 years of age. There's Hooper there. Just tweaking as he hits Mike Brown in the tackle. Very good chase from Australia there. Haylock Petty in. Winning his first cap. And Chris Robshaw winning the first line out. Missed out on the Wales game. In effect, rested. He was away at his brother's wedding. Youngs. With Mako Vunapola. Back to the scene of the course of Lions test. His turnover ball for Australia. Chance for their back line to run it. And here's Haylett Petty across from the right. Taking the pass from Hall, the left winger. It's Foley. Ooh, that's a good one from Haskell. But it's still with Australia. Foley. And here's Falau. And out wide it goes to Fardy. Inside Watson as well, ball back quickly. Real feature of the All Black performance, especially in the second half against Wales. That recycling of the ball, so quick, and Australia doing the same here. And he's posing England problems. Here's Haylet Petty again, with a step off the wing. It's a fast start, all right, from the home side. Pocock, back with Phipps. Taken on by Newman Arnold. All six foot ten of him. Phipps coming to the blind side. Hey, look, Petty's touched so much ball in his first few minutes of international rugby. Just a couple of minutes. That's nice as well from Seo. On to Newman Karebi, then Falau. Here's Kurandranik. England really stretched here. Karebi again. Haskell trying to slow it down, but England just can't stop it coming. Foley. On it goes to Simmons, offloading. Holmes nearly there. England desperately need a turnover, and they've got it. Etoje was in there. As the young man so often is, his club colleague Billy Vunapola. And now Ben Youngs. And the pressure is relieved. Now that ball had to find touch there. That was ominous stuff from Australia. Great turnover there from England under their post. But Foley took a hit from Haskell, but he's just offloading. And there's Pocock smashed. 
England will come very hard in that inside channel. But there are threats everywhere. Kurindrani and Karevi, what a potent pair of centres there. England are going to have to make those hits around Fernley's channel and make sure Australia don't get the whip they've got in this first five minutes. Nice for Moore, we've been used to that. Australia's most cap hooker, 103 caps now. The captain right in there. To get it back to Phipps. And again, Foley, all Australia. Kondrani over the game line. Rob Shaw thinks he's got it, he has. Two big turnovers for England. Foley's playing so flat at the moment. Karevi the decoy, you can see blood there on his forehead. It's Kurindrani is the man carrying and causing problems for England. Good rearguard action from the visitors. Now important just to get the line out going, get, get hold of the ball and really settle their game a little bit after this powerful Australia start. Chris Robshaw with the uh, turnover. Sense that Robshaw and Haskell, all those caps, all that experience, they're going to need every last drop against Fardy, Hooper and Pocock. But England weathering this early storm, and that is very apt at the moment in Brisbane. That's some horrendous weather before our arrival. The team caught the uh, tail end of it, and... It's a little bit stormy out there between the two packs and the captains being called together by Roman Poit. <laughs> oh, that's an error there. Missing touch from Powell. Great chance there for England to make some ground. Still have a chance. Mike Brown. Ben Young. Oh. Still stay. And the mark called for, seemed by Foley. He's got rid of it anyway. Got a long way. Brown again. Good white skate. Marlon Yard is covering this try scorer against Wales. And he backs his kicking and he gives it a good thump as well. That's very solid there from Marlon Yard. Very composed, took his time there, good clearance. He's a fine finisher, pyrotechnic runner, but Eddie Jones will be delighted with the way he cleared his line there. Michael Checker looking pensive as always. Ben Young's the first line, that one by England. The box kick was far too long. Easy mark for Australia. One of the reasons Young starts over care is the quality of his kicking. He has to put the Wallabies under more pressure than we saw with the last one. Young Samu Karevi getting the treatment there. Six weeks ago, almost in tears on the bench, broke a hand against the Chiefs in Super Rugby, but he's recovered from that. And what a recovery. There's the England bench. Looking at that bench, Joe Launchbury absolutely outstanding against Wales two weeks ago. I think at some stage, fairly early in the second half, we'll see Atoje move back to six. That's why he practiced there early in the week, not to start, but to play half an hour or so, 20 minutes, with Launchbury moving into the second row, which gives England more dynamism. Ben, and the if they're having real problems at the breakdown, though they've started well, it gives what them extra breakdown design? expertise. This Launchbury man of the match against Wales, a uh, better on. feeling than his man of the match against Australia last time he was met. Phipps, vantage being played. Good chance this for Nick Phipps. So often the replacement getting the start is Michael Hooper. Phipps again. Big Rory Arnold. 
learning how to use his throw, Michael Checker told us the other day. Michael Hooper, twice he's been popped right off the side of the run. There's Simmons. Man who led the Reds until Slipper, James Slipper, is on the bench for Australia tonight. Came back from injury for Lau. Fardy, the unsung man in the back row. But such an important component part. Scott Seal, that was a good run. And Foley pulls it back to Falau. Oh, Falau breaks through here. Great chance, wide to Hooper. They were screaming for the try. They thought they were going to score all around us. Still might. Arnold again. It's another Australian attack. In goes Watson, left his post. Hooper's in. Hooper's carried the deadly effect early on in the game, but that try comes from a mismatch. England cannot allow their front row men to get caught in the wide channels against the likes of Israel Falau. Falau will beat quick centres, but against a prop forward, well, this is just such a mismatch. Little show, and Maka Vunipola just doesn't have the speed to get to his man. It's a missed tackle. He can do awfully well to scramble first time, but Phipps sees the blind side. Watson's held by the lovely ball from Karevi, and Hooper carries for the third time in two minutes, and he's in. Michael Hooper scores his 10th international try, now vice-captain, not the leader. But the young man celebrating nevertheless. That's a try Australia clearly deserved on the evidence of the near first 10 minutes of this series. Every time they're getting outside those 15-metre channels going wide across the pitch, England look very stretched. What we're seeing is a pace that England didn't face at any time during the Six Nations and they're struggling to adjust to it in the early minutes. They know all about this man, and he's 28 points at Twickenham, but he doesn't start with two this evening in Brisbane. It stays at 5-0. Just at the end, uh, the scoring moment, should Watson have trusted Burrell? Yeah, I think he probably should have done. Anyway, Hooper's on the board, Australia. Ooh, that's a good tackle, really good tackle coming in on uh, Foley. England putting themselves about, they're having to. Then Young's flying in, that time uh, Hartley looking for the charge down, bit of an Apola. I think of anything, England just need to take a little bit of heat and pace out of it, yep. and they do. Rory Arnold at the moment is getting his hand on plenty of ball, pulling back in the Brodie Retallick style, and England saw an opportunity via Ben Youngs and went in for the hit, but the Australian ball retention is very good. Hartley to the tail and Rob Shaw, here's Jonathan Joseph and Luther Burrell back in an England jersey, missed out on the World Cup. No! Of course, that's good on the gain line, but then the ball is just too slow there. Cruz goes in, but the damage is done. England get the scrum, but to get so quickly over the gain line, they'll be disappointed they're not producing and recycling quicker ball for their number nine. Ball was available for White, some problem to, uh, to leave the road for. Scrum attacking team. No what a battle this is going to be. In the World Cup, England thought they could impose their game against Australia in the scrum, as they have done for a decade. It proved to be anything but that. Australia, brilliantly coached by Mario Ledesma, smashed England. It was a psychological and actual turning point in that match. If England have turned this game around, then Ben Youngs knows the big eight in front of him have really got to get their game back together. And he's got options now, hasn't he, Ledesma? Sia Moore and Holmes starting on the bench, Pilotta now, Slipper and Kepu. Kepu 
not played since he got injured in France playing for Bordeaux Bang. It's a heck of an impact, isn't it? It really is. England have launched bringing laws to give you ballast in the second row, but that is a fine front like row. Okay? Pelotta now and Kepa in particular. You have your gap, you have your gap, and there is a way for both, okay? Eddie Jones said a lot of good things about Dan Cole since he's taken over, but he's got a test today. Cole himself said Australia had the best scrum in the world at the World Cup, and Scott Seo was one of the best performers. England now, three men behind. It's a move that goes all the way back to Brian Ashton, and maybe beyond that. And that means nothing. Never gets there. A lot of frustration surrounding that scrum. Even more now for England as three kickers awarded and Australia go quickly. And try scorer Hooper gets it away. Hale at Petty. Rather gave that away. But Mike Brown doesn't quite get the distance that he would have wanted. It's very much Australia's first 13 minutes though, isn't it? Territorially, they have been in control of this game and they've been the team threatening. That number one, number one, is number arguably one, a penalty yeah. there. Barella's gone in with a shoulder. There's no attempt to make a tackle. Clear sign that England will be trying to intimidate Australia. But I don't think you intimidate Hooper too easily. Moore, one of five members of the Brumbies pack. Foley, Falau, from playing outside centre, of course, in Super Rugby. Here's Hale Petty, who is simply popping up everywhere. Both flanks. And having a ball out there, really enjoying international rugby and his introduction to it. Here's Phipps. Foley, Moore, back to Foley. Kurandrani goes against Marlon Yard. Looking for a massive handoff there. Imposing himself. Holmes. Man who's bound for the Exeter Chiefs. Through the legs by Foley. They're enjoying this now, the home crowd. And Karebi. In comes Watson again that time. Looked like the right call. It was the right call. It was one he had to make. It was the two on one, otherwise. What out? And there's Hooper back to Phipps. And Foley changing the point of attack. Lovely feet from Pocock. Had a chance to offload there. There were two wallabies on his shoulder. Went for the contact. Here's Phipps. And Haylett Petty again. Rory Arnold dips the shoulder into his opposite number, Atoje. Phipps to Holmes. Lovely confidence on the ball, Foley, and here goes Falau. They love it here. He loves it here. The former Brisbane Bronco. Two tries in the first test against the Lions. And he's got one in the first test against England. Israel Falau. England are on the rack. But it's England's Bane again at number 10. Foley who makes this. Just watch the line. He fades across and Falau's just drifted outside Owen Farrell. Farrell doesn't know which man to go for. Both men just fading. This drift from his man, it pulls in England. Farrell there and Falau, he's just got such a change of pace that when he drifts right to left, as you'll see again now, there's nothing England's outside half can do. He's just on his back feet, he's backpedalling, and Falau just burns him off. And Australia, they're burning England off at the moment. That is a super try, and that was a super view of it, wasn't it? See the effect. Just, just the fact that Bernard, Bernard Foley just held that ball so long and just drew England to him, enabled the fullback to fade off the pass, it was beautiful if you're Australian. And Foley composes himself only to hit the upright. He'll be disappointed with that, that was uh, much easier than his first conversion, but he won't be disappointed by his general play, which was of the highest order. There's the drift across, and that is a lovely line from Israel Falau. 
Advantage to Australia after the knock on from England. Advantage almost. And they look to play. Mike Brown. England needs something, if only an attack. No, three. George Cruz. Good to feel like the series has started for them. On the front foot, it's all a back foot at the moment. As it was in body line. Watson. Hartley, Joseph. Nice feet from Jonathan Joseph. This is front foot. Here's Mike Brown. And Watson not quite there. Phipps, great tracking. Chance Australia to break away. Corandrani. In comes Yard. Just when England thought they might have something. Back in, back in. Phipps. And Foley doesn't have the support this time. Uses the boot. Brown. Watson. Had he managed to get his hands on it, he surely would have been in. But it was great tracking back by Phipps. And there were others there too. Here's Farrell. That's nice. And Joseph again, who's the man who's got England going with that break. Youngs. Makovonopola. Youngs again. Billy Vonopola. It's the carrying game that England want to see. Joseph. Brown. Good decision by Falau. Robshaw. No! Youngs to Farrell. Billy Bonapola. Nice angles from Farrell. One inside and one missed ball on the outside. And a good carry from Mako. Wave on the signal from the referee. And there's another signal. The penalty. And Youngs goes quickly. More the captain. Watch the nines. Watch the nines. We need to have that looked at. Preventing the ball out. Scott Fardy, I think, on the floor there. The uh, indication from the referee. There's no option here for England other than taking three points. That's their first concerted period of attacking play. Some really good rugby there. The jewel that is Jonathan Joseph's feet came into their game. Farrell outside and inside, much better from England. They got some ball, they used it well. They're coming away with points. So if they if they carry out with the guy on him like this, both go to ground, I can come in because there's no rock. No, because he was on he was he was on feet, but from the side. Oh, okay. It's a good it's a good way I react when I told you no, you release. That's okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy with that. I thought, you, I thought you were saying you could have stolen it. No, 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 no. No, no, just All from right. the side. Just, like no, just like want to take it off behind you. Just so they go quick tap. You happy to, uh, to play on? Yeah. With a man in front of you? Okay. Constant Stand chatter there, just letting you listen floor, between the players and the referee. David Pocock certainly established lines of communication. Now, I think we know this is going over. Last time he played 10 was against Australia at the Rugby World Cup in an England shirt. And Owen Farrell is going to get England's first points of the night, which he does and will go down to Owen Farrell's club teammate, Jamie George, not in the England 23 tonight. He's uh, waiting to talk to Graham Sims. Graham. Jamie, some respite there with Owen's kick, but how grim a for 20 minutes is that? Yeah, it's been pretty tough, to be honest. Um, I think we're just letting ourselves down defensively a little bit. We're very tight around the breakdown, and, um, you know, fair dues to Australia. They're playing in a good attacking shape. Uh, you know, they're filling the field, and, you know, we're struggling to cover that because we're so tight around the breakdown. I think, you know, the main fix-up for us is making sure that we get our space again, then that means that we can... Uh, can go forward and cut down their space because, you know, they're dangerous when they've got space. Jamie, thank you. Good luck. Tony's restart. And Mike Brown. 
with the save catch again. Of course, being pushed by Alex Good, another Saracen. Premiership player of the season, man of the match in the final. Falau comes forward and commands that. Up comes Dylan Hartley. Just couldn't quite get there in time. And Karevi's pass was nice. It's already gone through the hands of Fardy to Rob Horn, who's the other vice captain of the team alongside Michael Hooper. And Scott Seo. Rated by many as uh, as important as any member of this Wallaby squad these days, the loose head. What he's done at the scrum, what he does in the loose. Phipps scored in possession. Now that hasn't really happened before. Very sharp there from Ben Youngs. And Cruz nearly in on Pocock, but not quite. Phipps, Foley, taken by Kurandrani. There's all that talk about who will play 13. No, it's Kurandrani, the man who has been playing so well at 13. And good work by Dan Connell, amongst others, at the breakdown there. Toji again. Well, the game has not gone in his way at all in the first 22 minutes. One thing where they have done pretty well is the breakdown. They've got two turnovers and a penalty from a turn from a breakdown in dangerous territory. This time, Farrell just pulls back from going for the five-metre line, makes sure that he gets territory, gives his line out a chance to get England into the game. Totally understandable. And that's Cruz. England can't get it going. Youngs takes over. Finds Watson again wearing 14 but operating as left wing. Cruz. Youngs. Jonathan Joseph. Greg Holmes doesn't buy it. Just two starts he's made before today in Australian Colours since 2007. And this time it's Australia who win the breakdown battle. Got over the ball very quickly there. Yeah. Which want to play fast. Okay, but they are fine when I penalise your ball carrier. Yeah, but you know. Time off. Stephen Moore. We're trying to get away to the next round. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's how he's insistently tired. Okay, we pay attention to that. Talks a lot to the referee. George Cruz winning the battle there against Simmons, but Australia very quick to set their position. England working very hard on their driving mall in line out before the game, but the Wallabies make sure they're going they're absolutely nowhere. Got A1 England position very quickly. The Desmond England. and company yes, will be delighted with uh, that defensive play. Okay. Don't play the man without the ball at the run. And some awkward positions were formed in that ball. Would have caused some damage. Simmons sits up. He went up highest and he came down heaviest, didn't he? And he was wincing all the way through. And he's leaving the field, Rob Simmons. Having said that, the benches, both Australia and England, are stacked with locks. Hall and Mum for Australia, Launchby and Laws for England. So much possession for Australia. And here comes James Hall, back into international action. Former captain, went to Harlequins, maybe thought his chance had gone, but his form there has brought him back into the fold. Of course, he's got over uh, the 60 cap mark. Good. Ten. Very popular Let's man go. in these parts as well. Involved controversially in that Lions test here against Australia. Now this time it's Australia missing touch. And Brown, with the narrow angle, sends it long. 
Fine Halen Petty, formerly of Beeritz. Billy Bonapola, England's Player of the Year. Man of the match three times in the Six Nations. That's great work from number eight, clearing up that ball. Farrell's crossfield kick. Falau. Scanning, looking, but overhitting. Well, if there is one weakness in Falau's game, it's his kicking. He really hasn't mastered that. It wasn't a brilliant kick from Owen Farrell. It, it gave Israel Falau a lot of space and he overcooked it. And England have got a real gimme of a position here. Seven man line out, Billy to the toe, look, goes up. But England drive. Itoje did really well to get that back. <laughs> Australia thought they'd stolen it. Away, go low! Ben Youngs, Farrell, <laughs> Luther Burrell. <laughs> Youngs again, here comes Captain Hartley. That might have had an effect as well. Bit of a stinger. Marco Vunapola, young Jars looking for it. That's what he did to New Zealand a couple of years ago. Caught the eye of uh, Eddie Jones then. And he can get another penalty. They are scrambling their way back into this match. Again, bang in front of the post. Again, no option. Has to be three points. Rob Horn. Yeah, thank you. Trying to get a little bit groggy. Really important defensive component in this team. It's a fair old battle there, isn't it? Hooper all over the place, and then he gets wiped out. Penalty already given. No worries, Dylan. I'm, I'm looking at. I'm looking at. Dominant, dominant ball, dominant scrum. We want to go forward, but if they're cheating, we can't have that. There was fair from my view. I can, I can do mistake, but like there was fair when I, I didn't blow. Roman Poit have a word now. Next Saturday, 10:30, Sky Sports One. Second test. We're in Melbourne. <sighs> Who will hold the advantage? and easy again for him 10-6 well, the way England have sorted out their problem with Australia's wide play to distraction it's not defensively they've just got the ball and made sure they've kept it and Australia haven't really had an opportunity to play they've turned it around territorially that score in the end comes from a really loose kick from Israel Folau that gave the luck gave that gave England 40 soft meters and it's the little errors like that that can just bring a team back into a game Time off. You can oh, see there, England, the last five minutes gold. or so, they've just kept the ball. 11. They've kept playing in the right part of the field, and they get another three points. Rob Horn's That's going. Five. That collision with Dylan Hartley. Time back on. And he's not right. And coming on, we have Christian Leia Leofano, who is probably going to play in this match. Did he not become uh, a father this week of missed training? In the early part of the week. He's playing it now. Ball to Foley, they all bought it. And Foley is racing away here. Bernard Foley is doing it to England again. That's try number three. And that is golden rugby. Time off. It will be looked at though. Yes, I can. Uh, Any reason why I cannot award the try? Could you check if there is an obstruction in him. midfield around 45 We're meters to see in if there's an obstruction, but he can't do it. Check the footage for say. any reasons not to award the try, yes. starting with potential obstruction. Yes, please. Seven, go away. Farrell was claiming something. Burrell trying to get there to Foley. 
Arnold in the way. Do England have a case? He just grabbed, does he grab the arm? He does. And I'll tell you, Luther Burrell, as soon as there's contact, his arms go up in the air. Keep your eye on Burrell now. He's a contact. I've beaten him out of position. Ref, he's taken me out. Yes, please. That is the best footage available. Okay. Decision. Ben. Sorry, Roman. The decision, the goal player is not in a position to catch the ball. Yes. And he is the one who then initiates contact. I fully agree with you. No try and penalty against the goal. That is correct. Thank you. No try. Not in position to play to receive the ball in front and eating the play. Foley's gold moment is wiped out. Mike Brown will be very relieved as well. That's a one on one tackle that the England fullback simply had to make, and he never looked like making it. I'm not altogether certain, you know, whether that man would have been stopped even without the penalty by the Australian Luther Burrell. No try, obstruction is hobbling off and George Ford is on. Thank you, Ben. So it's Farrell back to centre then. Michael Check, you can see his reaction there. He's clearly unhappy with that decision. You can see why. You can see why it was given. You can see why Australia would be very upset. Boos are just dying down and England want to get on with it. And Maka Vunapola carries forward as Ben Youngs was really smart there. Crowd even more restless now. Work form, you came in a second time. Away, oh, Steven. Too many infringements at the breakdown. Tackle not rolling away. Offside position. Number eight going in a second time when the rook is formed. Have a word for the, about that for your team, okay? Well, you could see Ben Young was holding up three fingers. I presume that's what he meant. He's having three times now. At least. Work form, hands. And England get another chance to take three points. Now with Ford on and Farrell having to shift to centre, that changes the England game plan quite a lot. There you can see Pocock involved. Ben Young saying three times, looking for a yellow card. But England, their game line carrier at the inside centre has gone. It gives them more width to their game, but they're going to have to think now about how they crash that game line. Right now, though, what they are doing very well is keeping the ball, and the penalties are coming. Australia not so disciplined without the ball at the moment. Amazing, really, if Farrell gets this one point in it. Well, after Australia's really fast start, you know, England have just chucked back into it and have dominated play for 10, 15 minutes. And they're getting the points to show for it. Farrell. Sweet. The way Owen Farrell has been kicking the last month of the season, you didn't even think, will he get this? He's in that sort of form at the moment. But how fascinating now. George Ford, confidence so low, is thrown back into the test arena with 50 minutes to go, unless Burrell is coming back. But it didn't look a head injury. It would look likely that it would be Farrell moving to 12. Well, Ford had been warming up for yeah. quite a few moments. <laughs> Burrell's last act was to uh, win a penalty. Maybe his uh, lack of mobility <laughs> helped England out. Goes on off in the air well enough. That's great take from Atoji there somehow. Big momentum swing. You know, Australia all over England. England now are in control of possession. Oh, that might be loose 
for Farrell and Joseph. Joseph kicks on. Joseph takes. Big momentum swing now, all right. What a risk when you try and play from all parts of the field. That was reckless from Australia, but more importantly, it was inaccurate. And Jonathan Joseph is such a quick man. And again, we've seen it time and again. When the ball is on the floor, his ball control is really good. That's a loose pass. Foley can't handle it. Ball knocked on again by Karevi. Pops up for Joseph. He won't have an easier score than this. It's a terrible pass from Israel Palau. Farrell muscles his opposite man off the ball. And like a good footballer, Jonathan Joseph is over, as is the conversion. Farrell's eyes there. They were lighting up. There is a replay of that conversion, just to confirm that again from that distance, Farrell doesn't have any problems. And England lead 16-10. Quite remarkable, really. Especially when you consider the disallowed Foley score. Fascinating start to the series, and Itoje again, man mounted. He's so solid on those restarts, he just gets up high and he's tough, and you just don't move him. Youngs. Watson going after this, fell out. Done well to put that pass out of the line. Foley. Oh, oh, oh. Got a little tickle there. But that's Mike Brown having to apologise to the team. Initially, it was very good news for England. Farrell legitimately made the hit on his opposite number, Bernard Foley, who will be a little bit shaky after that try as we Horn looks on. But then Mike Brown Castle makes here, a really elementary Oi. error there. It's a big call going Brown over good, and I have to say, in the first 33 minutes of this match, you know, Mike Brown was bailed out by that decision to disallow the try, and that was a, a real fumble there. It was a poor kick from Yellow that started to get England back in the game, or really back into it. And what the mistake here from Brown will lead to. Just looking at this alignment now, Israel Falau. It stands up from fullback, he goes into outside centre. Christian Lely Gafano has moved to inside centre where he will play as the second playmaker. Kurindrani and Karabi playing wider. Look at Atouje, definitely a leader in the making, we know that. No, just to make sure everybody has a good way to, uh, to hang it. No, it's early days, but uh, remember when John Eels burst onto the scene and he was given that uh, nickname of nobody because nobody's perfect. And I just wonder if England have found one, another nobody. Crutch! Bind! Three! Set! Full penalty at the scrum for Australia, music to their ears. And it kicks off. Sort of. In the modern way. Let's go, turn off, turn off, Ben. Hey, 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 hey. What are you doing, Dick? Number three, Inging. Number three, Inging. Number three, Inging. We, we want to do this, we want to clean spot. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's go. <laughs> Billy may not have done a thing, but he wanted to. Time on. Dan Cole was penalised for hinging at the scrum. Now Bernard Foley, who has played some lovely rugby in this half, but hasn't got a kick successful. Really needs his three points here, because it's been a... A shot for Australia, 10-0 up, in control, suddenly they're in a scrap. The 
It's the easiest of his three kicks. He should go over. Important points, these, for Australia. And Foley nails them. Well, apart from those two missed kicks, he hasn't done that much wrong. Couldn't quite pluck that pass from Israel Folau. Dan Cole, bottom of your screen, number three. You can see him there. Hinging, down he goes. Easy decision for Romain Poit. George Ford with the restart now that he's on. Two stop! And Foley. And he'll want the quick one. Brown. Probably feel responsible for that three points. Rob Shaw, good hands. Farrell wide to guard. Now, let's see what the England winger can do. Well, we'll see what the Australian winger can do. New man, Dane Haylett Petty. Makes a super tackle there. Yard knows it was close. Those are the spaces a wing dreams of. Chris Robshaw's hands were brilliant. He's got 10 metres to go at Dane Haylett Petty. And the debutant wing pulls off a superb tackle. Yard did very well actually, he released the ball before he went into touch and at least he can secure the line. The Toje takes. Youngs to Yard again. And Smore is stopped, this time by Pocock. Billy <laughs> Bonapola. Hooper thought he had the right to come in there. And what he did was legally enter and also totally and utterly disrupt. There was no ruck formed, as Roman Poit explains. Hooper did a great job there. Yeah, disrupted England and Vudi Pola just didn't control the ball. There you can see the loose head loses the ball as he goes through. Very messy. As we approach half time, you know, despite Mike Brown's error that gave Australia those very soft three points, England will be delighted with this scoreline. They were all at sea in the first 15 minutes. They did defend too narrow. Australia will get them outside them with ease in the wide channels. But England, it's not they sorted their defence out, they just got hold of the ball and they kept ball and they kept position and they kept territory and they chipped away and chipped away and chipped away until Australia made one horrible error and Joseph was in. And a bonus for England, they get the scrub penalty this time, just on the stroke of half-time, this will be it. And you have to say, the bonus of Owen Farrell and the team is, you don't think it could be 13-19, you think it will be 13-19. Farrell has been flawless, kicking from the ground so far, and this is very, very re regimental for him. He should get this. And one back for Dan Cole. It went against Scott Seo. So an immediate response. Oh, look at that, then, I mean, penalty count. Australia, 8 to 2 against England. If England have to sort out their wide defence, Australia have to sort out their discipline. Just said how important possibly the uh, Mass Foley penalty was to Australia. Well, ditto here for England. Just how it will make them feel as they disappear into the changing rooms on the back of this. Farrell to make it 19-13, and that's exactly what he's going to do. England lead 19-13 at half-time, and shortly you will get the views of Michael, Will, Johnny and Sir Clive. What about the Wallabies, Michael? Yeah, they've got to look back on that first 15, 20 minutes when it was working, it was working really well. Get possession, 
possession of the ball, cut out the penalties and the silly mistakes and just get back to where they were in the first 15 minutes and play the game at speed. We're underway again. Back to Stewart and to Miles. Thanks, Alex. England's kick-off. And the Wallabies looking to run it out. Just those three previous wins on Australian soil. Foley to touch, two in 2003, which Sir Clive and Johnny will know an awful lot about. And of course, that's time in Sydney, 2010, can this England side add another. In front at half-time, but then so were Wales. Thought that 2003 game at Melbourne, one of the finest England performances for many a year. This team have got a long way to go to replicate it, but they fought back very well in the second quarter of this match. Interesting thinking of the line out, wasn't it? A little bit of confidence, isn't it? It's going to be a penalty Australia holding on from Billy Vanapola. Yeah, and who's the man at the back? Pocock, as ever. And that is a brilliant kick. It's a misnomer, really, isn't it? Penalising Billy Vanapola. It should be a penalty awarded to the man who stopped it because Pocock just makes sure that the number eight can't do anything else Line white. Line white. didn't have the greatest first half conceded a couple of penalties lost a couple of turnovers to England but he could still be a massive influence in this game along with Hooper and his powerful running game second to Dan Carter in world player of the year last year fully Giant Curran Drani there. And even bigger, even taller Rory Arnold, but he's lost control. And who came to rugby quite late. It's in the sugar mills. And here's Anthony Watson, who's in a bit of space. Where's this going to bounce? Into the arms of Curran Drani. Phipps to Hale at Petty. It's good to see England confident enough to go across the face in their own 22. Tackle from Haskell. He's been very fast off his line all day, James Haskell. Leia Leofano, and that breaks down with Falau. Little tap comes in from Hartley. That's what comes from putting really fast press on. It's much better from England. The English defence has earned that penalty. Hey, hey, and look at the reaction of Hartley hey, there. Hey, Delighted. Hey. Away, away. His tap was important. Away. Australia Australia lost the chance to get away. We, don't, we won't talk every time after my whistle. We won't talk like this. Shot. Well, if England was shocked in the first 15 minutes of the game, they're certainly not now. The defence taking this game by the horns, and again, Itoje, 21 years old, but he's there encouraging everyone. He's a real leader in the making. European player of the season, Mara Itoje. And alongside Billy Bonapola, they are going to be two rocks of this England pack for some years to come. Well, Another Saracen, Owen Farrell, lines up this kick. This goes over, Miles, and England have a useful little cushion. And I would say this does go over. Well, yet to miss. Most have been in front, to be fair. He's hit them with authority. Absolutely. Wherever they are. But what about this one? Not so... Good chase though from Rob Shaw. That could keep the pressure on. Fantastic play from Rob Shaw. That really was all heart and soul. Here goes Foley. And Falau realising that he couldn't wriggle free. Use it! Phipps screaming to his side. And he got the protection. Oh, and Mike Brown there. 
Is that Nathan Gray that he's tussling with? Yeah, well, Mike Brown is in the right there because Gray was trying to get his hands on the ball so England couldn't go quickly. The Australian bench should be rem reprimanded there. Says Water on his back, he's one of the assistant coaches. Yeah, he's got to allow Brown to play that. That's not right. Don't want to see that creep in. Not from the coaches. Brown has a reputation, but he has every right to give him a shot there. And England start to give the world a pack of shot. And there goes Haskell. James Haskell stepping. In goes Youngs. Good control by Cruz, that was not easy as it came back to him. England sensing here. May have missed the penalty, but they might leave with a whole lot more. George Ford wide, Marlon Yard, anyone can score it from there. Yard's delighted. Well, right now you have to say, what a master stroke it was from Eddie Jones to make that tactical substitution on half hour. It's helped sort out the defence, but bringing George Ford on has just given England seven points. The driving more brilliant, James Haskell, who has had a massive game today in defence, and then George Ford gets flat. That is what Ford can do. His confidence as a goal kicker was shattered at, Wem at uh, Twickenham two weeks ago, but as a distributor, he can still do that. A 20-metre pass, and Marlon Yard scores again. That's a brilliant try. The drive in forward play, the break by Haskell, and then Ford with that sublime pass off the left hand. And that's six in nine for Yard now. That's a fine start to his international career, which has been stuttering. But he didn't stutter there, just had to collect that sumptuous pass, as Stewart says, from George Ford. And Farrell straight away has another kick. A much more fruitful one. And you just knew he'd get it. The Grand Slam was a fine achievement, but a series win here would mean much more. It really would, and England are now starting the series, possibly in the right sort of way. There's a way to go, but that is a very useful lead. Well, Michael Checker looks on now, and he's got a few problems in need of fixing. The England pack just started to exercise some authority, and Ford and Farrell working in tandem. A series win would mean so much more than a Grand Slam in terms of achievement, but just winning this game in Brisbane would be a massive win for England. Dean is on, and Michael Hooper is right on there. And immediately, chance for Australia with a penalty, yeah, yeah, but they it. are looking for more than three. And Hale at Petty. Next score's a biggie, isn't it? Foley, Moore, at the very least they should get a penalty attempt here. Sio. Carried by Hall. And he's back for the penalty. For, for support. Yes, the next score is a biggie, but it's not quite as uh, big and as it man, could have, have been. Have with six Hooper was pulling the uh, gold number nine back off of the rack. Okay, right on the on. touch line, it's better. Yeah, very there. good restart work from Australia. And once again, the leg drive of this man, Michael Hooper, quite extraordinary. Ben Young does very well with the tackle. And with 13 points of difference between the team, Australia, they don't think that's cut the lead to 10. They're looking for a little bit more. Momentum has swung massively against them. They need to get more than a penalty. They need to get this gold crowd going as well, don't they? Yes, it just felt like. And they said the next score, that score to make the difference yeah. needed to be a try. And that's what Moore wants to deliver here. He goes to the front now. Mum, the new man, can't take it. Oof. Then Jackson's being asked if this is a knock on. The assistant. Well, that one, or not? What I think as well. You get the feeling just looking at this that England are in Australia's faces right now. 
I thought initially it was a knock on. Glenn Jackson didn't see likewise, but then the second one, just a little bit rattled at the moment. Maybe a lot rattled. Well, Jackson obviously was in perfect position for that throw right to the front. This is a very important scrum here. Need a good, clean strike from the skipper Hartley. And now the Bunapola coming in field to make the angle for Ford. Or a solid, static scrum and Young's to clear it. England will give an awful lot for an effective clearance here. Stay quiet, please. Okay. Yeah. He's facing the other way, Courtney Laws is stripped off as we uh, look at the uh, scrum in the reset. Well, there's hinging and boring in at all angles there. What England would give here for just a very straight, solid scrum. They don't need to shove Australia backwards, just keep it clean and set it. The great thing Fine. for Ben Youngs, he's got his ability Second. to clear it, and he's got Ford, and he's got Farrell in the crisis. It's on the move before it went in. Now it's gone right round, and uh, look at it, Tojo. I know I keep pointing out players' reactions, but they are something else out there. They are so pumped up, this England side. Well, they've got themselves out of a hole there. Australia didn't take the three points to cut the gap to ten. They went to within five metres, they made a mess of a line-out, and they've been penalised for illegally wheeling there. <laughs> Certainly, Miles, the scrum that was such a sorry state for England in that World Cup pool decider has really been sorted out. Hatley's done a great job in the early days. Toje again, athletically, bending himself into a position to make that a two-handed catch. But it is going to lead to a turnover. There's a lot of work to do here for England because there's a lot of time left. Oh, yeah. And there's one country that do not bring up the white flag, especially when they're playing the men in white. But of course, is Australia. But Toje, what a year. He's gone from becoming a club star to a Six Nations star, and he's just taking a step the next level now. Get early part of the half possession going with the home team. But crucially, the points going England's way. They've had ball Australia, but it hasn't been as quick, it hasn't been as clean, and they haven't got into those wide channels as easily. Referee wants to Captain. sort this one out. Number one and number three. Number one goal, number three goal. White. Cyril and Number one, please. The issue is in, on, on your side. We didn't play any scrum. Just be careful now, from now. We want to play scrum fairly. Stable, feed, and we play on afterwards. Stable All right? Just as they return Sorry. to the scrum. Yeah, 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 OK. I think I'm right in saying this is uh, England's highest ever yeah. score in Australia already. Being the previous best of 25 in Melbourne. 2003, when they won that game 25-14. Like I say, uh, that was the day when I, I thought Clive Woodward's team would go on and win the World Cup later that year. They were absolutely spectacular in their ruthless finishing. And that's pretty ruthless from the England pack. Captain number one. That's Will Green was on fire that day, wasn't it? And the England pack are on fire on this day now. As Co is shown the yellow card on too many. You think of the damage Scott Co did to England in the World Cup, and you think now, eight months or so since that World Cup match, 
In the space of 11 months, Michael Checker turned a weak Australian scrum into one that dismantled England. Eight months on, Eddie Jones' team with Neil Hatley to the fore are doing a similar job. And you have to say that Harley's appointment as a captain, as a strategist, makes such a difference. His line-out work is good in the scrum. He's a tough scrummager, but he's not afraid to strike as well, and it's making a massive difference. Wasn't there at the World Cup. Also didn't know what body line was. Have to Google it. Not a cricket fan. But if body line meant physical, then England are certainly living up to their coach's pre-match hope and hype. And there is another penalty. Green power from the pack again. It's pulled down. The crowd don't like it. That makes England love it even more. That was the more you pulled down. If there is such a thing as traditional English international forward play, it would be the driving mall. They played some nice stuff. Yards try is an absolute beauty, but there is nothing wrong when you've got the opposition on toast to really drive it in. They're starting to get scrum penalties at will. They're starting to exercise complete authority at the driving line out. You don't have to play wide rugby to win. You take the opposition on where you're strong and they are weak. And at the moment, England have identified it and they are enjoying it. Well, you mentioned it before, Stuart. We watched him practice just shortly before the game. Just how intense it was from England practicing moments like that. He's so tight to the uh, full-time whistle, rarely do you see it ramped up that much, but it's now coming out in the match. You can argue if this kick goes over, it led to the Haskell break, which gave Ford the chance to throw that pass. It led to three points here. That drive in Moore could soon be worth ten points for England, and ten points means so much at this stage. Takes them beyond the... Two tries, two conversions, Mark. And that's exactly what Owen Farrell has done. There are some rocks up front, but Owen Farrell is made of granite too. Goal in body two, and goal in mind. Three. Nick, could you ask who is the new captain? For On come Pelota now and Kepu. Of course, there's no Rock. loose head in Seo. Okay. Michael Hooper takes over the captaincy as Stephen Moore goes off, but we will need to see Slipper on should we get the set piece. Got to say, Mars Tapu Pelota now coming on with Kepu. That really is a high quality impact pair, but they need them because England are on top at the moment. the way England have coped mentally with the ferocious Australian start. The confidence that comes from winning and taking a title like England did back home in the spring. But it's worth reiterating, nothing done yet, not against the green and gold. Here's Hayla Petty, that's a nice line from Karevi, and he wrestles himself forward. Phipps wants it quickly, that's how the game started with that quick ball. Oh, it's down the short side. And Fardy. Stay there, boy. Phipps again. Here's Dean Mum. Exit Exeter. Leia Leofano. Foley, his turn to throw a lovely pass. Falau, Hooper's going again. He's got a power in here. Now Australia are out of this. They're never out of anything. Hooper is an absolute machine when he gets that ball. He's got so much pace. You know, he could be an international centre. He runs great lines. He's so quick at the passing, so good at the pullback ball. Foley just rolls that left rift over it. And this time, Falau comes up with a pass. A superb score. Lele Afano pulls it back. Foley, that's a gorgeous pass. Falau faded out for his try, this time he fades out and comes in. England are sucked in, they have to be committed, and Rob Shaw has no chance against the pace of that man. Hooper's second of the night. A 
and they believe they're still in it. Well, Not need, a flicker. They needed that, didn't they? They really needed that quickly. Now the man in Sydney they call the Iceman because he's so cool, Bernard Foley, who has been a threat all evening. Can he turn that into a seven-pointer? Talking to Chris Malone from the Bath, Quinn and the Irish fly half who now coaches with Australia, works with Bernard Foley. Talking to him this week, he says this man just wants it. He wants every kick. And there's pressure on this one, but it's not his best technique, Stuart, there. Messy strike. He's missed one from a similar position in the first half. Pulled it to the left. Hit that with no authority. Just explain it technically. What happened? Did he just fall off it? I think he didn't catch it cleanly. I mean, he didn't catch it cleanly. His shoulder fell away. And as that's happening, Courtney Laws is coming up for George Cruz. So England lose their sort of line out technician. Whenever but they you gain want. a really powerful ball carrier and big hitted man in the second row. Impact up. He's motoring after this as well. He's got a number of England shirts in front of him immediately. Great chase on the uh, restart, but Australia cool. And his mum again. Fitz. And he looked petty and he had charge down there. Mike Brown clattered to the floor, but he held on to it well. And ben Youngs has got himself back in position. And he nearly charged out. There he is again to find George Ford. Dylan Hartley. Ford's deep. Stay wide. So is Hayley Petty. That didn't have to be too deep. And Ford first to get back. He needs big distance here. Gathers himself. Thought about going for distance, but then he thought, let's make sure I find touch. You do not want this Australian team running ball back with 30 metres of space. Hits it into the stand, slows it down. Tatuvu uh, Palotta now, and who played for Australia before he played Super Rugby in that time ago. 62nd cap tonight, and it's gone better previously for him at the line-out, but Australia do manage to sort it out. Just his hall. Twenty-two offside. Wide. Twenty-two offside. Another Wallaby penalty. In midfield. Twenty-two. George Ford this time, the man penalised. 22 offside. Thanks, Ben. I don't think tonight, the way he struck the ball, this is within the range of Bernard Foley, goes to touch. There's Bernard Foley, it lines that up. Let's go down to uh, pitch side again. Another England squad member, Henry Slade, is with Graham. Henry, how plump a cushion right now does 11 points feel? Uh, I think, well, we're pleased with the position we're in at the minute. I think we've come out in the second half with a lot of energy and uh, really got after him in defence and um, put a lot of pressure on him with, our, uh, with their exits as well. So I think the momentum swung back a bit their way. So hopefully we can just um, try to bring it back on our side for the last few minutes of the game. I think you have to go out and get some more points here, Henry. Do you think the defence, now that you've sorted out the defence, is going to be good enough to hold this? Sorry, say again, sorry. I said, do you need to get out there and get more points to win this, or do you think the defence, now that you've sorted it out, is good enough to hold this? Uh, like I say, our defence is, is better second half, but they get they're a dangerous side, so, yeah, you can't really say 11 points is enough at this stage, but um, at the minute, obviously, we're doing just enough to, to hang on to it. All right, Henry, thank you very much. Miles, back to you. Thanks, Graham. Danger here, all right. His mum. In comes Haskell. Referee again weighs that on. James Haskell has had an absolutely fantastic game today. He was so quick, the ball was out. He was aware of the rules, laws of the game. Superb from the Wasp. 
and Ford gets it as far as Hayley Petty, but this is coming straight back. Australia have some tempo here, and they want to make it count. There's Falau. Awkwardly hit a boot, and Watson might prop it. Fardy all over, and Phipps went low, but it's England scrum half Youngs finding Budapola. Ford, lovely pass under pressure. Farrell, Yard is after this. Cross comes Foley. Away gone. Well, we expect the slugfest in rugby terms. We've had that, but we've had so much more too. And Brown now trying to rise. No, he lets it fall into the arms of Falau. Wasn't quite in the right position. D Mum. Farrell now enjoyed his time in England. Stuart. Farrell can now, of course, play defensively in the line because it's George Ford dropping back, and that gives England an extra bit of aggression. And that's exactly what he's just done. Ford takes a moment to have a breath. Missed six out of seven, didn't he, against Wales? And you know what? Despite Eddie Jones saying he was brilliant, he wasn't anywhere near his best. His judgment of when to pass, when to kick, when to run, was not at the level that it can be for George Ford. But to be fair to the bloke, he's come back here in a real cauldron in Queensland, and he's come on and he has done everything else of him. And to be fair to Eddie Jones, it looks like he knows how to manage a character. And make a substitution, yeah. Key ingredients for any coach. James Slipper comes on. No, that's fine here. It's gone for the 10 minutes. Won't be seeing Sio again. One and three. Mako Budapola. He leaves to be replaced by well. Matt Mullin. And you can see Paul Hill coming on as well. Open, yeah, yeah, we wait anyway, but open the gap wide. Open the gap wide. Very purposeful stride from the two new props. So important now, the bench. You know, players always want to start. Of course they do, but it's a, a 23 man game. It's Mario Ledesma, the man in charge of the. Uh, Australian scrub looks on stoically. Well, he'll be back to the drawing board on Monday, that's sure. In fact, he'll probably be there quite late tonight. Hooper with a slap back. And then an offside. And that might just be... An absolute gift for England. Do you see the man who has competed at the tail of the line out? Haskell is just everywhere tonight. The ball broke loose down the touchline. He was there to flip it up. He's, he's put a huge amount into this game. There he is, just disrupted. Pocock, what happens then? In the way is Dean Mum, penalty conceded, and Eddie Jones, he knows that things are beginning to go his way. Talk about Eddie Jones handling characters, he's really bigged up James Haskell as well. Isn't he? It's obvious that the Wasp man, the Wasp captain, has responded very well to that kind of treatment, and he's playing the senior role superbly tonight. Yeah, well, you know, all the guys in the studio will know some players need to kick up the rear end sometimes, others need a lot of love. Haskell has got the love, and he really has taken it upon himself to be a leader tonight. Question marks, is he a seven? But he's played with such fury and commitment, it doesn't matter what number's on his back. He's been everywhere. The kicks get bigger. Farrell just gets stronger. Roman, goal substitution, six goals. Sean McMahon coming on for Scott Fardy. Well, that's a big impact substitution as well. Fardy, a real dog on the floor. He's a clever line out forward, but McMahon is one hell of a ball carrier. Whenever you want, then. Whenever you want. Two converted tries from Australia, and they're still only level. That was a big three pointer for Farrell. From Youngs, described this week by Eddie Jones as the best box kicker in the world. Backward. That one is with Hooper now, and then Horwell 
Australia really do have to go for this now. Oh, knock on white. Knock on white. It has been a lot forward from England. Phipps. Mum finding himself in that channel quite a lot. There's Pocock, Kayla oh, Petty, Falau, long range strike. Mike Brown might be over to you here. No, he's cut out by the pass. Phipps takes it. 12 minutes, there's still time for Australia. Here's Colin Drani. Oh, I think he's all given that ball. Foley, Haskell in there again, would not let him go. But it's a good clear out from the Wallabies. Advantage being played. There goes Slipper. Phipps, is there an extra man? Well, the new man, Karevi, went straight, went forward. It went Kebu, this is Kurandrani. And there's no overlap there now, England have numbers. They've got back in position. Here's Phipps again. Michael Hooper. Phipps to McMahon. He would make most nations starting. 15, he really would. And as Australia come to a halt, the referee brings them over here. Outside the rock, 17. Have to go to the corner. They have to go to the corner. Ten minutes to go. They need the seven. Yeah, yeah. It's a commotion. No, no. Concussion assessment. I cannot play. I cannot play. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Time off. Okay. It's Matt Mullen who gave the penalty away. David Pocock is having to go off. England about to bring on Danny Kerr and Jack Knoll. So many players in this match on the bench who could have started. But there's depth from both sides and it's another reason why it is going to be a fascinating series. Okay. So important, England's words, to get that first one. I just wonder, you know, the moment nine. the door might have slammed for Australia was when Kurindrani went for it himself, five metres out. He had that predator, Israel Palau, striding down the touch line, and I think Kurindrani made a mistake. England under 20s versus Scotland under 20s as Ben Young goes off and this great world championship of, uh, of rugby at under 20 level. 5.45 the start time for that one. Not quite seeing as much of it here as we'd want to in terms of the timings but bits we have seen it's been brilliant and well worth tuning into. And the second test here is going to be uh, well worth tuning into as well next Saturday in Melbourne. Phipps, Foley, oh, line from Haylett Petty. Thought he was away. Haskell there again to chop him down. Curran Johnny to make amends. They came hard, they came straight. Again, it was an astonishing first tackle by the Wasp, James Haskell. But quick ball, they haven't had quite as much quick ball as they would like after the first 20. But with Curran Johnny coming off quick ball, Straight as a die, nobody is going to stop the big Fijian from Brisbane. It's four tries to two, World Cup finalists for a very good reason. Ten minutes to go. What a test of Danny Kerr, George Ford and Owen Farrell now to get England in the parts of the field where the Australians can't strike, because from 30, 40 metres, they're going to come hard. Foley should, but has to get this. And you look at that scoreboard, and does. So, we have a seven-point gap. <laughs> we have one hell of a first test as well. As you said, this is going to be some series. It's been a brilliant first test. What a line. 
Joseph slightly wide there. Kurindrani sniffed the slight hole, straightened up the left foot. Nobody stops the big man. So England making this uh, string of changes. Joe Launchbury is also on, by the way. Knew about those coming. Now we know about the uh, men going off for Kerr and Noll. And Luke Cowan Dickey is on as well. Man who starred at under 20 level. And now looks to start to try and help England close this out. I know, I know. Helps the Australian course. I know. Interesting taking Hartley off. Well, it's, it's a massive call if you think back to the Premiership final. Uh, Luke Cowan Dickey really didn't get his throwing right at all under pressure, and actually looked better when they made the switch with Jack Yandel. Now they're putting him under this furnace, this atmosphere. What a call! Hooper to Foley, full out, sees off yard. How important could that be? As Karevi gets it, he can't go through Brown. My goodness me, what a finish this is. There's McMahon, Phipps, Hale at Petty. What sort of athlete is Israel Folau as well? Dima Launchbury out of the line to... The warning's there, and it is just about heated. Slipper, that's nice, two for Folau again. England just hanging on to these tackles at the moment. There's Phipps and Corandrani. Noel. Got to try and get a player out, and they have, and it's Haskell. James Haskell once more. Noel went pretty low as well on Corandrani. That's the way to tackle the big man. Jack Noel, the Cornishman, thinks I'll get low, I'll hang on to him. And then Haskell, the ubiquitous Haskell, ushers him into touch. Now, what a big, this is probably the biggest throw of Luke Cow and Dickey's career as Checker bangs, bangs his desk in fury. You don't say. Luke Cow and Dickey had that warm up against France, but it didn't go right to the World Cup. Oh, that's and the way to he gets go. it right. And where does he go? The youngster, Itoji, just growing into a, a top-class test in front of our eyes. Know each other so well through the uh, age group rugby. Oh, this is really mature play from England. That Win is, the penalty. That's tremendous play. Under pressure, seven points up. They go to Itoji at the front, and they know that they can drive Australia, even with the change of personnel, and they've done it superbly. I think more than anything in the second half, and I'll be in intrigued to see what the, the, the men say in the, in the studio afterwards, it's been the maturity of some of England's decision-making at key moments that has really stood out for me. Well, what maturity if they hold on to this, the Australian onslaught that was inevitable at the end here at the Suncourt Stadium, Lang Park, as it used to be. A heartland of Australian rugby. Union All League, Atoje beaten. That was one England would have loved to have secured. Away! Phipps. Horwell losing captain against the Lions on this ground. Put in Australia. Still moving. Just Still over moving. What, four minutes. Still moving forward. And still so much threat in this Australian team. Kurindrani, Hooper, and above all, Israel Folau at full back. He has been frightening every time he's touched the ball. A couple of errors, but he's been brilliant at times. And that is one heck of a lineup there for Dean Mum to take. They've only drawn once before Crunch. in their history, these two. Sir Clive will remember that. Five. Right at the start of his reign. 
Set. Back in 1997, Australia 25 wins to England's 18. England just three of those wins on Australian soil. Australia get the scrum penalty. They want more than three. It's going to have to be for the corner. Pure will from Australia here. The scrum struggled. Oh, look at this. That is a real statement of intent. And that's so cool from Australia because they think if they go to the corner and they get a seven-pointer, they get the draw. They think here we get three points. On the line, England kick off. We come Sorry. back. We've got four Sorry, minutes to win the game. Oh, oh, what a moment. Cool or foolish, we're about to find out. You could hear the gas from the crowd. The I, have 70 I think, I think, 20, was it 48,000? Uh, I think every one of the Australians looked to that okay. corner okay. thinking it's going down okay. there, and there wasn't an indraw of breath, wasn't there? Okay. They don't deal in draws here. This has to go over from an Aussie perspective. Good and kick. it will drilled straight and true. Now we will find out if that is the right call. It was at a function yesterday afternoon with Elton Flatley, who you'll remember saved Australia in the World Cup. At least he took them to extra time with some ice cool kicking. That is not a World Cup final venue, but this is a, a superb pressure kick from Foley. He's done it again. We've been doing this a long time. That is right up there with big calls, isn't it? Right up there. Oh, it is. It is. England won't be rushed as Phipps is replaced by Frisbee. His first cap. What a moment to come on. Now then, Australia say we want the win. Not the draw. We think we can do it. Etoje. England look to hold their discipline. Keep Australia back here. One turnover, one spillage. And it's England's test. And they're 1 0 up in rugby's version of the Ashes. Haskell. Haskell. I, I don't know who the host will make man of the match, but it's James Haskell. There was Launch Spring. His was teammate, and here's Haylet Petty. And Israel Falau. And Owen Farrell lines him up, but he's made good ground. We're about to go into the final minute of this thrilling first test match. Unforgettable game. Frisbee away. Foley's been so cool, that oh, passing no, no. game. England trying to turn it over with Young Hill on the floor. It's Kurandrani. Hayla Petty almost blasting through. Lost by Karevi. Knock on. England will get the strum. They might get more. Denny Kerr's off. Denny Kerr is going like he did in Paris for the Grand Slam. He's back with Lord Spree. England could have just closed it out, but that's not their way now. Here's Haskell. And four little chip. Jack Noll. The Cornish boy in Australia. England promised to give it a go. They've done that all right. And a whole lot more. The red rose is blooming on Aussie soil. Glen Eller looking on. An Englishman for a month, Eddie Jones, the finest win of his career, bar none. Please, why, and why? George Ford, what could you say Please. about him again? Please. He made one try with that pass, he looked up, Please. he saw Jack Knoll under extreme, extreme pressure, and he just dicked that one there for the Exeter man. And his mate from school days, Owen Farrell, can apply the coup de grace now. England get the penalty against Wales, Danny Kerr kicked it out, as if to say we've had enough. He gets a penalty, he gets a scrum, but he takes it on all the way. It's positive play, and that is a wonderful kick from Ford. It's been a great 50 minutes for the fly half. It's been a wonderful 80 minutes for England. They were battered for 20 minutes. They kept their composure, and they have been so cool, so composed, so clever in this second half. Did you see Ford there? It was like he was in his back garden with that kick. 
so composed as you say and the reaction from the England management they are 1-0 up and clench that fist how many times Miles you and I worked together when England have said we didn't take our chances well in this second half they haven't made that many chances but when they've got in the Australian 22 they have been ruthless record smashed England's highest total obviously Farrell just wants to make it a little bit better if that is possible for England and their supporters he deserves this just to crown off a magnificent display 